Okay, today we are going to be looking at just making, kind of looking at some of the things we've looked at already and making a very simple um, times table program. So this will ask the user um, basically what they want to um, uh, times, what they want to, what times table they want to create. That's, that's the way. And then um, we'll automatically create it for them down to how many, however many we want. We can make it not stop if we wanted to. So first thing we're going to do, um, we're going to ask the user to input uh, the number that they want. They want their ten times table, their five times table. So um, we'll just do an, um, we'll just do a uh, number one equals uh, int inputs because um, if you looked at the last episode you would uh, remember that um, int will change um, whatever the user types into a number and uh, not a uh, not a letter um, so we just asked the user um, what times table would you like to know mm -hmm. Okay, so number one equals input, what times table would you like to know? Now, I've just press enter there and put it into the middle of the screen. That is because I forgot to put my double brackets on the end. You have to make sure you put double brackets, a bit of formatting there for you. So, what times table would you like to know? So, the user then puts that in. So, in order to make our times table program, we need to use a different type of loop um, to get it to repeat itself. Um, we could use a while loop, but we're going to do it a little bit differently now because we've already looked at those, and we're going to use something called a for loop. So a for loop is set out like this. So what we're saying with a for loop is we're saying repeat these actions for this amount of time. Now loop counts as a counter. So every time the action is completed, loop will include, increase by one. And loop is actually a number variable, an integer that we can use in the program. And so when we make our program, obviously um, it's got to go, if we select it, for example, that we want to know our five times table, it's got to go one times five, two times five, three times five, four times five, five times five, all the way up to 10 in this case. And instead of actually writing down the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we can just use this loop variable because for loop in range, we'll automatically increase the loop variable by 1 every time the loop has been completed until it reaches 10. So let's have a look at how we would actually get this uh, to go. So uh, we need an answer, and that is going to equal uh, our loop times number one. So we're saying here that um, the answer variable here will be whatever position the loop is up to, if that be one, two, three, four, times number one, which is what the user is putting at the top here. And we just need a print statement here to uh, print this out and actually display what we're doing. So we're going to print and it's going to start with the um, number one, so we'll print number one and with printing um, strings and variables together we need to make sure they're separated by a comma so number one comma and then a speech mark and an X for our time symbol then another comma and then now we need to print the loop so just loop another comma speech marks and an equal symbol and then a final comma here and the answer. So let me just explain that in a little bit more detail here. So we have number one, which is the number that the user has selected. So if they want their five times table, that is what they're going to do. And X, which will always appear exactly the same. The loop, which will count through depending on what part of the loop it's at. So it will go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then an equals symbol always exactly the same and then the answer depending on what the loop is at the answer will change every single time so let's run this and see how it looks so what times table would you like to know let's do the five times table okay we can see here that because of the way the loop is structured we start at zero I should have mentioned that actually as the loop will start at zero uh, because everything in Python starts at zero, position zero. So we have five times zero equals one, 
uh, sorry, five times zero equals zero and all the way through. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, if we just want to get that the tenth item on there, we just need to change the range here to be eleven. Let's run that again so we get all ten of them. And there we go, we have all ten of them now. So that was an introduction to the for loop, um, how the range works and how changing the range will uh, result in uh, different outputs. So have a look at that and have a look at some of the other videos for some more advanced stuff or go and revise some of the um, other bits and pieces if you weren't sure on some of the stuff in this video. Okay, thank you for watching.